Let's talk Man United. 20 league titles, 3 Champions Leagues and so many more honours combining to make up a remarkable 66 major trophies. The Red Devils are the greatest domestic side in English football history. And when you also consider their huge global fan base of 659 million, United are unequivocally one of, if not the, biggest football team in the world. To put that into further context, Man United have a higher number of fans than the entire population of 4 separate continents, with almost 10% of the entire globe supporting the club. So if you heard all of that in isolation, you'd think that the Red Devils would be winning trophies year after year with the best players in the world plying their trade at Old Trafford. Yeah, it didn't quite work out like that. This season marks 10 years since United last lifted the Premier League, having won 13 of the previous 20 editions, with the side being completely trophyless since 2017. And all of this struggle can be explained by two words. The Glazers. This is the story of how the Glazers destroyed Man United. If we rewind two decades to 2003, Man United had just completed a remarkable comeback to win the league title against Arsenal, having won four of the previous five editions, as well as being the first side in the top five leagues to ever win the treble just a few years earlier. I think it's fair to say, Man United were at the top of their game. But with all of this success surrounding the Red Devils, it's easy to miss another monumental occasion in the side's history, as in March 2003, Malcolm Glazer bought his first stake in Man United. By 2005, the Glazer family had gradually managed to acquire 98% of the club, forcing the rest of the minority shareholders into selling their shares in what's known as a squeeze-out. This then gave the Glazer family full control of United, costing them around £800 million. However, they hadn't spent anywhere near that amount, using what's called a leveraged buyout to acquire loans of around £500 million placed onto the club's assets, essentially putting the money they owe onto the club rather than using their own cash to purchase the side. Now, if you're a bit confused about what I just said, let me put it into very simple non-financial language, which is probably a little bit wrong from a legal point of view, but will help any neutrals understand what actually happened. Instead of paying for the club with their own money, the Glazers essentially used the trick so that Man United bought themselves, but the family was still able to gain control of the side. And it's fair to say the United fans were not the happiest. This takeover also coincided with the conclusion of United's worst season in over a decade, as well as the sudden rise of Chelsea, and so pressure was high on the Glazers from the jump. A spell of three league titles and another three domestic trophies, the Champions League and Club World Cup between 2007 and 2009 followed, but it wasn't enough to appease the fans, who were rightfully thinking that the Glazers had inherited a side with incredible infrastructure from the playing squad up to the chief executive and hadn't actually done anything to help themselves. Then came the 2009-10 season, which saw tensions only get worse. It started with the sale of star player Cristiano Ronaldo, who was then replaced by the likes of Mamburam Juve, Gabriel Obertan, Antonio Valencia and a 30-year-old Michael Owen, who was not only injury-prone, but also a Liverpool legend. Now, of course, none of this was technically down to the Glazers, but given they made a profit of nearly 80 million euros in the transfer window alone, you can imagine that behind the scenes they'd likely left little open for transfers. A year later, Man United had officially become the first football team to break £100 million in annual commercial revenue alone, in a time when many around the country were struggling. Now, to some of you watching, this may seem like it has no real relevance to the story. However, in my opinion, it's a key example as to why the Glazers are hated just so much. For so long, football was a working man's sport. However, over the years, more and more money was pumped into the game, and after the start of the Premier League, it was clear that football no longer shared the same moulds that it had been built upon. And nowhere is that more clear than at Man United. Going into the Premier League, United had gone decades without a spell of real glory, but with the arrival of Sir Alex in the late 80s, combined with the Red Devils being the first side to jump on the train of heavy commercialisation, the good old days would return for fans in the 90s. This, of course, made United a very attractive prospect for buyers, which is why we saw the Glazers take full control in 2005, a move which, as I mentioned, earlier was heavily criticised by fans with it even being the real determining factor in movements like the Green and Gold one and even the formation of FC United in Manchester, a side built by former fans of the Red Devils who did not like how their club had changed. The new owners were out of touch and disillusioned with reality, proving that Man United were now a business rather than a football team, and having placed hundreds of millions in debt onto a club which had barely even been a penny in the red in the past, combined with a financial crisis of the late noughties and early 2010s, a hatred of their owners spread amongst the United fan base which had never been seen before. And then, things only declined between the fans and the owners when the Glazers started to sell some of the minority shares in the club onto the New York Stock Exchange. However, instead of using the money to pay off the debt or refurbish a crumbling Old Trafford, they pocketed the cash, in a time when fans of the club were struggling to even put food on the table. Within just a few years of their ownership, it was all but unanimous that if you loved United, you hated the Glazers. From ex-players wearing the green and gold scarves to fan protests, the success on the football pitch was about the only thing the Glazers could be praised about. However, then in just a couple years, everything changed. Sorry to cut in here, there's just one thing I need to ask. We get a lot of new and recurring viewers who aren't subscribed to the channel, and so it'd mean a lot of you guys could hit subscribe as it helps push our content out even further. I'll even give you a few seconds to do it now. 
Okay, back onto the video. In 2013, after another league title, both Sir Alex Ferguson and CEO David Gill left Manchester in the same window, being replaced by David Moyes, but more importantly, Ed Woodward. The new chief exec had been the man behind the financial growth for the side between 2005 and 2012. However, despite knowing what he was doing with finances, Woodward clearly had no clue what to do in relation to football. His first season in the role completely epitomised his time as chief executive, having spent all summer chasing big name transfers before Mara and Fellaini became their only big signing. As well as this, the appointment of Moyes turned out to be a complete disaster, with the Scotsman being sacked after less than nine months in a job, as United had fallen from Premier League champions down to seventh place, failing to even qualify for Europe in the next campaign. In May 2014, Malcolm Glazer would pass away. However, his sons would then take over duties at Old Trafford, where things got even worse for fans, as debt continued to be piled upon the club before the brothers started paying themselves dividends, taking money out of the club hundred millions in debt. Back onto the football pitch and things wouldn't improve either, as with Edward in charge, the club only fell further and further behind. Manager after manager was brought in based on how big of a name they were rather than their actual ability, culminating in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being given the job full time, essentially solely down to the fact he'd enjoyed a good playing career in Manchester before the Glazers had even come to power. The likes of Van Hal, Mourinho, Lukaku, Sanchez, Pogba and Maguire were all big name, expensive incomings with none really matching expectations and all left or are expected to leave the club at a massive loss. To put it simply, Ed Woodward was a complete fool in terms of when looking at football, and so while their biggest rivals were building some of the greatest teams in English football history, United were left behind, perfectly summed up by a series of semi-final defeats under Oli. Funnily enough though, it's actually Oli who'd built arguably the best side in the 10 years following Ferguson leaving the club, with a second place finish in 2021 being the closest they came to a league title. A little bit misleading though, as champions Man City finished an entire 12 points ahead of them. Not only this, but Oli was finally able to break his semi-final curse before losing the Europa League final to Unai Emery's Villarreal. Going into the next transfer window, United spent over £1 billion on signings in the previous eight years with the second highest net spend in the world, only just behind their city rivals who would see a much higher level of success in the same time frame. And it was this, among many other factors, but mainly the side's involvement in the European Super League, which had put enough pressure on the Glazers and Ed Woodward to force the CEO to resign come the end of the calendar year, with his last signing perfectly summarising their demise. Going into the final days of the window, Man United looked incredible and set for a real title charge, before adding club legend Cristiano Ronaldo to the mix as fans finally started to believe. It turns out though, that may not have been the best signing. After a terrible 21-22 season and an infamous interview with Piers Morgan a few months ago, Cristiano Ronaldo left Manchester United for the second time, this time in disgrace, although not before he exposed the dark truth of just how much of a mess United were. After returning over a decade since the end of his first spell at the Red Devils, Ronaldo said that nothing had changed, with the side using outdated training equipment and a stadium quite literally falling apart, with flooding and a rat infestation showing just how bad things had gotten. Now to many, you may see a side that spent a billion pounds on players and think that Man United fans are overreacting and that the Glazers are far better owners than what they want you to believe. However, if anything, they're worse. In the two decades since Malcolm Glazer bought his first shares in the side, him and his family have saddled hundreds of millions of pounds onto a club which had never seen debt in the past, failed to spend any money on updating facilities, seen the club's longest trophy jut since the mid-70s, paid themselves from the club's money instead of paying off any debt, and have taken a reported £1.6 billion out of the club. To put that into perspective, that is well over five times the amount that Newcastle was sold for just over a year ago, who are now just one place below them in the table, with the two sides facing up in the League Cup final later this month. But most importantly of all, the Glazers have probably cost themselves money. You see, when they took full control of the club in 2005, it was expected they'd use their business skills to turn them into the most expensive sporting institution in the entire world. While they're currently ranked as the 19th most valuable sports team, having dropped down 17 places in the last five years alone, and that's all because of one thing, how poorly the club has been run. See, the Glazers took over the most successful, biggest and best football side in the world during the mid-2000s, inheriting an incredible infrastructure which of course did have a few faults that they fixed, however in doing so they created bigger, more problematic ones which has led to their downfall. Putting businessmen in charge of football may have helped them make money on paper, however if you read between the lines, had they continued their success or even just a fraction of it, all the way through to the present day and we'd be looking at a side worth near £10 billion. However, instead they're being reported at less than half of that. For 18 years now, Man United have been in decline. But with rumours of a takeover on the horizon, things might just start getting better off for fans of the Red Devils. But the one thing that will forever linger in the minds of United fans is how the Glazers have destroyed Man United. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment and subscribe if you're new. Links to all of my socials will be in the description, so please give them a follow. But for now, enjoy your day.